Hello everybody, Martin here, back with another match playing the Moon Deck Doomsday deck. Um, playing a pre-recording -record, a match here that was already played, so at the time I didn't know what I was up against, but turns out it was Nick Fit. So there you go, and I won the die roll, so I definitely want to be on the play here. And we get this hand, which is uh, totally a keep. Bit, like, would, would ideally want another land in lieu of maybe a brainstorm or the pro, but it's a great hand. The question is here, do we do we like lead off with the sensei top or do we keep open spell pierce? And good thing we have the pro because we can find out. That's one thing though I that's always annoyed me a bit when playing Doomsday, either this build or the, the more regular uh tendrils kill version, is that the taxing pro is like way more valuable. And you have to be more sort of like careful, or at least think think it through a bit more. I think a lot of storm players, I guess, would frown at me saying that. Like, I'm, what what are you saying? I'm not thinking it through when I'm probing my storm deck. But I just feel like when I'm playing regular storm, it's like less of a cost to cycle a probe early on just to get the information. Where here you have to sort of think actually, well, I need this to draw the first card of the pile or to draw. To win with land man. So, anyways, here I think it's correct to, to lead off with a probe. And we see this hand, double therapy, uh, veteran explorer, so clearly Nick Fit. They only have the white black duel, so no way to cast veteran explorer. They have an abrupt decay that might get to be a problem later on. They have double therapy. Galactique is actually a card we don't really care about. Our win condition is completely um, free of him. Uh, he only matters in so much as like he switches off our force of wills and our misdirection. So, and misdirection is actually a card we might need to beat abrupt decay. But I think we're for sure keeping up mana. We're not playing at our top, and then we will likely pierce their turn one play. Be that. The scrub line, oh, sorry, the top or a therapy, but I'm not really sure. The top will definitely get pierced. Not really sure about the other one. So, they therapy us, and we fetch. Well, it's, it's generally safe to fetch non basics here because that deck doesn't usually run wastelands. I've never actually seen a build that runs wastelands, and um. And also you want to, like, if you can, keep your basics in the deck, because if you get veteran explorer triggers, it's nice to be able to get something. So here I, I decide to cast a brainstorm instead of piercing, because I want to save my pierce. As long as I don't hit a third doomsday or a second brainstorm, I feel kind of good, because that way I can save the two doomsdays, and they don't know what I'm playing. And I'll be able to keep pierce up or the second brainstorm in case they therapy us again. Or use the pierce, like save the pierce for their, um, for their sensei stop. And I mean, it's very unlikely that they would name brainstorm once we've, as we've already brainstormed. I think it's very unlikely they'll name top after seeing the underground sea and probe and brainstorm. So, so we put back the two doomsdays here. I don't want to give out the information about what we're playing, and we just let this resolve. They named dark ritual, so they. They thought we were on storm, so uh, it's a good, good, good call. Draw Doomsday here, play out our fetch, and play at the top. And we don't want the second Doomsday regardless, so I mean, I don't mind cracking the fetch. But our opponent just therapies, and if they drew like, if they drew a land, they could be like baiting our Pierce that they know of, and Fluster, I guess. Uh, to uh, be able to resolve their top, but I like. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry about that. I like uh, countering this. I want to use the fluster storm, so I'll have Pierce or top in case they brick on land here. And they did, so that's huge for us. So I don't mind not using top on upkeep when I have a brainstorm. I feel I'm going to cast anyways. So let's cast the brainstorm with the fetch land out. Oh, actually, okay, no. I guess we're waiting. 
I guess saving the brainstorm in case they resolve entering Spore and flashback therapy is worth it. Here they just cast the the Sensei's Tabi into our spell pierce, and we're definitely going to take that. So let's look with top. Uh, decent, I guess. Uh, we probably we want the ponder. And we've cracked to get. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, so we can just cast the Doomsday here. We're under no pressure. If they draw, like, the worst thing that can happen is them drawing. A green source so that they have abrupt decay open, but we can make a pile with misdirection. It could potentially also be annoying for them to abrupt decay our top, but that's less of an issue because we can just draw the top, replay it, and then wait a turn. So we we draw, make uh, a pile with predict, with unearth, with misdirection, lab man. And a Gataxian probe. Now, remember when I played this, I actually started regretting not putting Pact of Negations in this pile because we have two draws, draw spells with the Brainstorm and Ponder, so I don't think we really need the probe. And there are worlds where they draw relevant spells to send them with us. Um, so, make the pile predict on top. We'll draw that on our next turn. They draw uh, a land that's not green. So they play another top. They just pass the turn. So we're going to predict ourselves. And we're going to enable land man. That happens. So we're going to probe them to draw the unearth. And turns out they have a path to exile, which we cannot misdirect. But we could pact it if we had the pact. Now, as it turns out, us having uh, like either ponder or brainstorm makes this uh, path insignificant. So it doesn't matter. But I, I don't know. I feel like I should have made a pile with like. Now I guess if the probe isn't there, then I guess we need the probe because we would be able to get into the library without using mana, so yeah. I guess it all somewhat comes out to the same. But anyways, we draw the unearth. And we cast it. And here we have the choice to either just pass the turn. Uh, it's a little bit cutesy because we know we know we have the win here. Uh, I don't think there's anything they could have on top of their, their library that changes that. Because if we just draw with top and then they path, then we just brainstorm to win. But we get cute and we pass the turn. And so they, they look with top. So now they're just dead. Now there is nothing. So, I mean, we let them look, but then we, we should have just drawn at this point, but we didn't uh, click through it. But now it's still our. It's end of turn, we have priority, and they're tapped out, so we're just going to draw top for the win. Yup, so there's that. Alright, so for sideboarding, I actually ended up bringing in the Sheldog Isle Emrakul plan against this deck as well. Now, there are they are splashing white, so there is a theoretical chance they could have Caracas, but I've never seen this deck run Caracas. Um, also, they have, like, they don't run Wastelands, they run Caracas, they have a very slow clock. It is unlikely, I think, that they would have a way to interact with Emrakul. Um, because remember, we're casting Emrakul, so them having, like, a Planeswalker, that, that answers it doesn't matter. Um, I also bring in a Massacre, just because they showed us Hate Bears, even though, like, um, I got Octique, which is off Kar uh, Massacre, but that's still a good card in this matchup. And I think I also brought in Chain of Vapor. And then I shaved a couple of pierces, because like most of their stuff is creature based, I guess. Um, yeah, I think I shaved the pierces and the fluster storms, but I could, I could be misremembering it. So. Yeah. 
yeah this is a this is a yeah a perfectly fine fine keep they mulligan the six and keep their six and stride to the bottom so they go by you into thoughtsies so we can force this but we're not gonna do that like it's likely they will take okay they took the brainstorm and Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, and they took the brainstorm and they surgical extract the brainstorm. Now there's a couple of things about this play that I can't really make much sense of. One is why? I mean, why waste your like you're boarded in this hate card, supposedly to be able to take the the lab man from the graveyard when I try to unearth him. So why are you like aggressively using it to take a brainstorm? Also. You thought sees me, so there was ponders, like like plural. So you could have taken the ponder instead with the thought sees and then gotten like an extra card out of the deal. I'm not I'm not trying to be mean or anything. Uh, so I'm just trying to word out what I'm thinking about why this play probably feels a bit weird. But I mean, it's not. I get that brainstorm is a, like a powerful card, and it's also like a, a card that can interact with our like be part of our win con, but. So they get to do that, um, and pass the turn. And they forgot to click on the brainstorm in the yard. I've made that mistake before. And oh yeah, I remember this. This was so annoying. Um, I I clicked F6, which is if you don't if you're not familiar with Magic Online, that's a hotkey that will let you pass priority until the end of turn, like until sorry sorry, like just for the rest of the turn. And I was going to do it right on their end step, but they must have pressed F6 right before, so I ended up pressing F6 in my own upkeep. And so I just skipped my turn, so I didn't get draw, like, play my land, which was, uh, fairly aggravating. Um, luckily I didn't get, like, insanely punished. So they green sun for one. I could force this, but there's not a one target that I'm really that worried about. So they get death right. Now death right is a problem. In terms of like winning with unearth, but we brought in this the Shelvar Isle plan, so doing pretty good about that. All right, so we just draw like more lands, which is not so great. And we make a mistake here in playing out the the basic island. I think we should have taken the Delta route, to fetch underground sea, because there's a world where we get to do like Doomsday next turn if we do that. So we got underground sea, we play swamp and petal. If we find the Doomsday on the Ponder. So I think that was a mistake. We find Fluster Storm in top. We, we want the top, I think. Yeah, we do. We don't want it to be like Thoughtseized, so we put it on top of our library and draw the Fluster Storm. And pass the turn. And lo and behold, they have a Surgical Extraction number two, and they're tar targeting Ponder, so they know they're going to get a Ponder out of the deal. This time, they also noticed that we didn't shuffle, so we, I did like supposedly we want uh, what's on top of our library. So, so this is annoying. Uh, I like the surgical extraction play better, even though like ponderous not really an important spell. But so I'm gonna force these on the top for sure, and we're gonna exile the ponder, which was gonna get exiled anyways. I suppose there's a world where it's better to keep the ponder and lose the fluster storm. I think maybe I like that more. Also, I make the mistake here of not playing out the, the pedal. Like I I know that they're playing like probably playing abrupt decay and pernicious seed and stuff, but I think we want to keep open the fluster storm here. They play a top and the taiga and they're just passing them. So they're keeping the death right with green men open to be able to take the the land man. So we draw the top, play a land, pass, play the top, and pass. And again, we don't play the pedal. Uh, so we're just both dirtling a bit with top. So they don't know about Fluster Storm, they know about pedal, and maybe they know about the two lands. Uh, I have to let this resolve. Um, if I fluster it, I'm just piercing. They can tap. I guess that would leave them without death right open, but yeah, whatever. So we lose our pedal, so that means we can't do 
um, doomsday next turn if we wanted to, or if we were to find it. And there is a doomsday, and we want that for sure. So again, we kind of want to protect it from being discarded, and we kind of expect to not run into a third surgical, which would shuffle our deck. So we, we just draw them in from out and uh, play out the land. Next turn, we'll draw the Doomsday and uh, be able to cast it with through the Delta, fetching on the Ram Sea. There's another thing I didn't really know, mention it in the, during the deck tech, but that's a way to get your five card library. To be a four card library with these days if you have fetch land in play and you make one of the cards in your library uh, a land that you can fetch it has to be the last card though because it will shuffle your library and you don't want the, the, the order of things to be messed up all right so our opponent is uh using their death right now in their main phase to take a force of will so i guess that means they're going to flash it the ball therapy yeah and so um we fluster this and they can pay for it uh, but they know about the fluster storm uh, so it'll just be a blind hit we're going to lose that anyways and they choose not to pay for it and they play a cannonist okay well i mean shell dog isle still beats cannonist all right, so we look at the end of turn. There's a dark ritual, but that doesn't matter because of Ether Sworn Canis. We can't play two spells, so we just want to draw the Doomsday, which we do. And so we fetch out Underground C and cast Doomsday. And they have no cards in hand, they're tapped out. They have a top and play, but yeah, they can't do anything. So we take Emrakul, we take the Shell Dog Isle. Uh, we take a massacre in case we want to kill the the cannonist for some reason. We take a misdirection and a fluster storm. The other three cards I'm a little bit sort of loose on. I'm not sure, like if there are particular things I need to be playing around. This way we are completely dead to like a Caracas, but they have no reason to be playing Caracas against this unless it's just randomly in their deck, which it could be. So let's see here, they play a pernicious deed, so that won't matter. Um, tags down to six. So Karak, uh, Massacre is on top of our library. I guess there's a world where, it, well I mean it's not, but it, it will be once we've uh, shelled our island. Uh, there is a world where um, they would have played like a, a bigger creature this turn instead of the deed. And then I think we need to massacre away the, the cannonist to not die before we get to untap with Shell Dog Isle. They didn't, so. So we hide away, we hide away the Emrakul. And we, draw, we put massacre on top. Oh yeah, but that was the thing, right? It shuffles. But we have the Sensei's top to look. And so we just pass the turn. And so they get in there. And pass. So we look with the top. We order it to draw the massacre. And now they blow the deed. And we could choose to, to draw here. They have not chosen to draw, they've just passed priority, so they have one card in hand. I don't see any card, any one card in hand that they can beat like that they'll win with. So that being said, we could have just as well drawn with the top. I think we should have done. There's no reason to, to lose it. Um, also, I really debated with myself whether or not to, to cast the Massacre here. I guess there isn't really... Yeah, I, yeah. the thing is, if I cast Massacre and for some reason it gets countered, 
for some reason, once I cast Massacre, they still have the Cabinets in play. We can't cast Emrakul, because Emrakul is not an artifact, and so it will be the second uh, spell of, of the turn. So, choose not to cast Massacre. We should cast Emrakul, get the Time Walk, trigger, pass the turn, take our turn, and they concede. So, yeah, awesome. We, uh, we got there. And, well, I mean, these are just not, I think, too... These these matches here are not to be taken as any sort of way, any any guiding light as to how good the deck is or, or how weak it is or whatever. But it's it's fun to play. I do I do enjoy it. I have to say, I think um, Doomsday is one of the, the most funny cards. Not funny, uh, but it's one of the most fun cards to to resolve in Legacy. It's it's really cool to be able to play it wrapped in this nice bubble of counter magic, but um, it does lose out on some other uh, key aspects there. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'll, depending on how you guys like this this video or these videos, I might do more of the, more with this deck. I think I'll definitely need to practice more with it before I, I venture into a competitive league, but well, I might do that. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.